Hello and welcome to another episode of Casting Views, the podcast that takes a topic each week and as the name suggests, cast views. This week's guest with me is Dan S, but we're not going to do a Black Mirror episode as you've been accustomed to hearing from him on here. It's another mind wipe episode and this time Dan is going to be under the microscope to have his mind wiped. So hello Dan, how are you feeling about that? It sounds quite serious, doesn't it? It sounds quite <laughs> quite a drastic approach, but yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Do you know what? it's it's good for me. I get to just ask the questions. You get to do all the majority of the talking, and yeah, get to interrogate you a bit. So yeah, it's all good for me. And have you? Has anyone done this to you on the reverse? Do you know what they have sneakily? Slade from the Game Club Pod. He does a show where he gets another podcast on, talk to them, and ask questions. But he got me back on, and yeah, and did the same back to me, and I wasn't expecting it. Because I've been getting a bit cocky lately saying, oh, I'm so glad it's not me that has to do this. <laughs> but it's all right. It's going to be nice and fun for me anyway. So, yeah, we, you stuck it out to do the complete Black Mirror episodes with me. We've got another one actually to do. and We still need to kind of wrap it up. And actually, that, that's so saying that that's how you got my availability tonight, wasn't it? You said about doing <laughs> Black Mirror and yeah. then you changed it. <laughs> really talking about it and... Uh... Got me here on false pretenses. Yeah, so can you make sure you're free another night this week, please? Uh, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so, and also, you are one third of the Just Football podcast. So how how are you enjoying the podcast life now? Yeah, yeah, it feels like I should be paid a little bit more. But it's... Um, Moving on. No, it's, <laughs> but it's been, it's been good fun, as you know. I've, I've enjoyed watching Black Mirror or re-watching Black Mirror and, and kind of talking about it. And I'm obviously a massive football fan, so... To be honest, that one, I enjoy just football because it feels like we just turn up and talk. And I don't fit, well, not from my side anyway, there's not a, a whole amount of planning. So it just kind of kind of flows. And it's, it feels like we're just kind of meeting up and talking about football once a week, which is essentially what it is. But it doesn't feel like hard work. Um, so it's, it's been good fun. Yeah. And, and talking of just football, actually, we're going to hear from you and me and Dave now with a little trailer from the three of us. Welcome to Just Football, a football podcast which aims to be your one-stop shop for all things on the beautiful game. Each episode will take a look at different features and aspects of the sport. From analysing the latest results, to reviewing upcoming key fixtures, to what's going on in the news. There will even be some quizzes and games to test ourselves. And you. We also aim to bring you analysis of breaking events and biographies of teams, from the Champions League to non-league. No filler, no time-wasting just football right so we're back so dan this is going to be i've given you the subjects this is just going to be a way of finding out a little bit about you having the listeners understand a little bit about what makes dan s tick and <laughs> uh, and we've you know we've we've known each other for what it's probably about eight or so years now isn't it yes it's, yeah. Yeah, it's been quite a while hasn't it if not a bit more and yeah we're, we're always talking about TV shows and movies, etc. So I'm going to throw a subject at you and you're going to give me one to three examples of that subject of things that you would want to enjoy or relive for the first time again. So these don't necessarily have to be the best thing. Like it doesn't have to be your best three movies when we get to that. But it's just got to be three examples of something you want to have that experience of the first time and why and if I know a little bit about it, we'll dig into it because sometimes people throw a real curveball and I don't know what these things are. So if you are ready to start, well, I'll tell you what, let's start with movies because I know uh, I know you do go to the movies quite a bit. Yeah, I, I do go to the cinema quite a lot. But this one was actually quite hard, I found. So I've got kind of a couple of random ones uh, and probably quite an, an obvious one in my list but just to double check the rules i get my mind wipe and have to re-experience it so i can't like forget stuff that i completely just didn't enjoy i have to do the re-experiencing bit yeah it's more of a case of just saying right <laughs> if, if there's one that you really it's something you really enjoyed that much that you know like there's always that game or that tv show that we've watched so many times and you keep saying oh if only i could watch it for the first time again or someone who hasn't watched it people say oh you're so lucky you haven't seen that before so it's more that it's it's that kind of example so you're going to forget it to watch it for the first time again okay cool so do you wish just do i need to explain each one or just give you the list how does this work 
let's do one by one. Let's uh, so you give me the example, and then you you explain why you would want to do that for the first time again. Okay, so I've been a bit cheeky on the first one because this is a group of this is a group of films. Oh, trust uh, you. But I've gone with uh, the Marvel Avengers franchise group of films. Uh, all of them. Yeah, I've, I'm sticking all of them in there <laughs> because, as you know, I'm quite a big Marvel fan when it comes to the films. And now we're kind of in this era where we're kind of all a bit superheroed out. We've all seen quite a lot, and we're kind of we're kind of you know scraping around the bottom of a barrel, aren't we now for for good superhero movies? But how amazing would it be to wipe all of them from existence and watch them again from scratch? Sort of like Thanos clicking his yeah, like a Thanos clicking his fingers and just going back and kind of experiencing them again and getting excited, really excited about superhero films again. Normally, I wouldn't allow this, but because you are a good friend and a co-host, I'm going to have to. I don't want to fall out over this. So are you saying you're kind of a little bit tired of this now? Yeah, I feel like Marvel have run out of ideas a little bit, if I'm honest. They've got a few... As you, know, you can only do things so many times, can't you? Like, you know, they built up a really good story arc with the whole Thanos villain and, you know, taking out half a world. It's difficult to do anything after that. Because mm. anything after that is going so subpar to what they kind of built up, so it kind of be good to watch that story arc all all over again up until the Thanos and Endgame. So I'm not really bothered after Endgame, so I can limit my movies a little bit. But between the first Marvel film and Endgame, it'd be great to kind of wipe wipe my mind and kind of experience it again. Kind of feel the same as you. The first few phases were really good, and at the time watching it, I know they did the end sequence or the end credit bits, but you wouldn't have thought that it was going to be a 10-year arc of films when you were watching those first few, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what, up at that point, the only superhero films you had, the Batman films, the odd Superman film come out, the odd Spider, you know, the two um, Spider-Man trilogies, well, not trilogies, but you know what I mean, the two yeah. Spider-Man universes. And this was the first time I'd ever attempted to do something like that. And I must admit, the first few Marvel films, I didn't really enjoy that much, if I'm honest. Like, I didn't really enjoy the first Iron Man, and I didn't really enjoy the first Captain America. I felt like it kind of came into life when the first Avengers film hit. Yeah. And you're like, oh my word, this is amazing. Like a multi-hero film. Like, we've never yeah. seen this before. So if you wanted me to limit it to one, I think it's that first Avengers film. But I need to forget all of them <laughs> okay. to be able to enjoy it. <laughs> okay, I see what you're saying now, yeah. Yeah, you're right, actually. I think I enjoyed Iron Man. I didn't going back at it, I enjoy it a bit more, but I remember at the time for, for years not rewatching the first Captain America because I didn't enjoy that. But yeah, like you said, there's something about the first Avengers film because that's when it really kicked up a gear and you thought, yeah. right, I can see what they're doing now. Yeah. Were you ever into the uh, the X-Men films? Yes, but not so much. Like I wouldn't go back and rewatch them, um, if I'm honest, but I, I did watch them all as they kind of come out. And what about your your boys? Uh, do they watch? A, oh, well, one's probably a bit young, isn't he? Yeah. Well, he's, you say he's a bit young, but um, so my youngest, who who's about to turn four, he's really into a. It's a kid Spider Man called Spidey and his amazing friends, <laughs> and it's and it, and it's designed for kids his age, and it's got like the Green Goblin nicking people's ice creams, like but that, that's <laughs> that's the kind of a crimes. So yeah. he's he loves them at the moment, and I've just bought him. I was gonna say, I hope he doesn't listen to this, but he won't. But he, he's just—I've just bought him like a Spidey suit for his uh, birthday that's coming up, and that's the most catchy theme tune as well. But Luke's getting it. Luke, who's now eight, he really loves superheroes. Um, mm. He's kind of chomping at a bit to kind of start watching them because we've kind of held back because they're mostly twelves. So it'd be quite nice to kind of like watch them with him for the first time as well. So that's another reason yeah. to kind yeah. of wipe my mind of them. And I don't know if you if you're going to have them in the shows, but. Do you watch any of the Marvel shows? I yes, I did, but only a few I've actually enjoyed. I enjoyed enjoyed the One Division one. I enjoyed the Hawkeye one, and there was another one I really enjoyed. I've forgotten what it was. The, you see, you've had Loki. See, I got quite bored of Loki. You had the uh, um, the Winter Soldier and Falcon Captain America one. Yeah, no, I didn't enjoy that. I've... The Hulk, She Hulk. I quite like She Hulk. If it was I, done, I never watched that. Yeah, yeah. If it was done completely separate from Marvel, it was kind of a little bit of a 
you know, Mick take. I, I, yeah. I quite like that. And was it Miss Marvel? Yeah, I got bored of that as well. Yeah, the show's been a bit hit and miss. I like One Division, like you said. I did watch Loki, but yeah, halfway through, I kind of turned off a little bit. Hawkeye, I remember enjoying, and the the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I like that one, but I like that because they brought back um, uh, the the guy from uh, Civil War, didn't they? The villain. Is it, yes. Yeah, is it Nemo? No, not Nemo. What is it, Nemo? I know oh, which I one remember. you mean. I can't think yeah. of what his name is. Or Zola. No, Nemo. Anyway, him. Yeah, and I, I liked him. Uh, the guy who was in the racing film, wasn't it? He was... Uh, the guy you, who you was know. in the racing film. He yeah, wasn't in the racing film. Uh, right. Was it Rush? Do you know what's funny? Because I've got Rush as my second film. Okay, right. So hold on. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's mind wipe that last bit. So Dan, let's move <laughs> yeah. on. What's your, what's your second film? Rush. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, Rush with... Uh, Chris Hemsworth and I, I don't know what the guy that played Nicky Lauder. I forgot, I forget his name. I think that is him, the the villain from, from he, the Avengers. He, Nero? Nero. I'll, I'll, I'll look it's something, up. It's something O, isn't it? And then you can yeah, you can then input it when you edit it later. <laughs> no, um, no, no, no. Uh, but so yeah, it, so the, the next two films I've got of of Rush being one of them. These are two films that I watched and thought, oh my word, that's amazing. And like they're both standalone films and I've kind of come out like kind of a bit mind blown at how good they are. I don't really feel like they get the credit they deserve. Like they were never, you know, Oscar worthy films or films that people will talk about in 30, 40 years time. Like, you know, some some of the old classics, but I feel like these two I really, really enjoyed and I'd love to kind of watch him again for the first time ever. Before we go into it, so yeah, it's Daniel Brawl who plays Nicky Lauder in this and is Zemo in Zemo. Civil War. It, so I was yeah. mixing Zola and Nemo and <laughs> coming up yeah. with, with Zemo. So yeah, so this is a film, like you said, about um, James Hunt and yeah, the rivalry between James Hunt and Nicky Lauder. Now, I'm not, I used to like Formula One. But I'm not overly knowledgeable, but I saw this and this is a great film, isn't it? Just even if you're not into motor racing, it's yeah. just that film about competitiveness and the rivalry and two men yeah. and their attitude, isn't it? Yeah. And like, like you, I'm not really into F1. Like I don't follow it, but I really love this. Like I, I thought this was really good. I thought it was filmed very well. I thought it was done very well. And I thought, you know, Chris Hemsworth and, um, the guy with Louder, I'm forgetting his name again. But I thought they were they were brilliant at their parts. Like the the guy that Daniel Gruel, did you say? Is that what you, you uh, said? Gruel, B. Gruel, Daniel Gruel. Yeah. When I, I didn't really know who Nicky Lauder was before I watched this film. And then I watched him and then I watched some clips of Nicky Lauder. I was like, oh my word, it, it looks like him. Like yeah. it's it's quite a good likeness. And I thought Chris Hemsworth and it was brilliant. I, I thought he played that part very, very well. I think they both are, aren't they? They... Yeah, they, they both really portray those characters well. Yeah, so 2013 now, so it's 11 years old, that film. Wow. I didn't realise how long, how long ago it was. And it was one I devo- not avoided, that sounds wrong, but it's one I hadn't seen for a number of years. And then I think I caught it, it, it was on Netflix, I think, over here. And yes, just I think you're right, yeah. So if you haven't seen it, yeah, really, really enjoyable. Okay, that is an interesting one, but I see uh, mainly just because of the Marvel connection, it feels like there. Well, this, this this one's not connected to Marvel. Okay, okay. So what what's your third? If anything, it's more connected to DC. Okay. But, but this film is another film I watched at the cinema and came out thinking, that's brilliant. And the second the DVD came out, I got the DVD. Now I no longer have that, but it's it's a film I love and watch quite often. But that's Focus, starring Will Smith and Margot Robbie. You and I think got we, me to I watch think this. We, Either we watched it together or I gave you or got you to watch it. I no, you got me to watch it. it you, you were going on about it at work once. Do you just want to say what it's about? Yeah. Yeah. So Will Smith plays a con man and he kind of, him and his team kind of expert on being con artists for loads of little crimes rather than lot, like a big one. Um, so he kind of goes around tricking and Margot Robbie kind of comes into the world and kind of joins in. But, you know, he's frauding, he's frauding people. He's making money. They eventually go into F1, don't they? They they sell some of the, the statistics of, of F1 cars to all the different teams and kind of con all the teams out of loads of money. But I've always liked stories, books, films, which have lots of twists in them, where you think, oh my word, that was clever. And this film has a ton of them. So if 
yeah, if you haven't watched this film, it is definitely worth a watch. Will Smith is brilliant in it. So is Margot Robbie. But yeah, really, really good. 2015. So again, another another fairly old film. And yeah, no, this was this was one. Yeah, you were telling me about it, and yeah, I watched it. And I do like those kind of slick. It's, I mean, it's not a crime caper as such, but yeah, the ones that like these con films, the films about on the con and the deception and things like that. And yeah. this, this does it really, really well, doesn't it? Yeah, and and the soundtrack to it is brilliant as well. Like the way the soundtrack plays into the story is is superb. It's the sort of film you watch and you think, I need to get those songs on my playlist because like, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're that good. But yeah, yeah, really enjoyed it. Okay, so apart from the fact that you've chosen about 50 films in, in that first section, um, those, those are good choices. Those are good choices. I, yeah, I can't argue, can't argue with any of those. So let's move on. So what, let's say in the same world, let's, it was a similar world, let's do TV shows. So one to three TV shows. Okay, one to three. Okay, yeah. let me see if I can narrow it down a little bit. Let me take that one. Out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, if you've got more, we can do an honorary mention, but we, you've got to give me do, your three. Uh, okay, so my number one is Sherlock. Okay, um, uh, yeah, so actually, I, in hindsight, you, I should have known you'd say that, yeah. So Sherlock is by far... I'm not even going to say it's a guilty pleasure because I don't feel guilty about it, but it is by far the best thing I've ever watched on TV. I thought Benedict Cumberbatch in it was brilliant. I thought Martin Freeman was brilliant. I thought the way they they pieced it together was really good. I think the first half of Sherlock's or the first couple of series was brilliant. Um, I think it kind of struggled in the last series because the the story was more about him than solving crimes. But yeah, it's by far my most favourite thing that's ever been on telly. Strong words, I know, but it feels like it deserves it. <laughs> well, this was another one that we spoke a lot about. And again, I, I have to agree with you. I'm, I'm trying to find a way of disagreeing with you. But so far, this was great. I think I have issues with the final season and the final episode. But yeah. the first couple, especially, like I said, Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman work really well together. Andrew Scott as Moriarty. Yes, he's also brilliant. really yeah. good, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. Really, really good. And... It was just, it was just clever TV, wasn't it? It was proper sit down and just be wrapped up in it for that hour, yeah. wasn't it? Well, the episodes were an hour and a half, which I always thought were because it they, the series were three episodes a series, but each one was like an hour and a half long. And I felt like I would watch one and didn't even realize it was an hour and a half because I, I was that into it, but I didn't even yeah. clock that it, so much time had passed. But yeah brilliant done you just have like i have visions of andrew scott playing moriarty in the tower of london in that scene where he kind of like breaks into three different london i think it's the tower of london it's the prison isn't it and it's one other i can't think what the other one is but it's so well pieced together there's for me the two there's two bits that jump out or a couple of bits that jump out in my mind there's the one where I think it's in the first season where he's at, there at the swimming pool and I think Sherlock got all like the laser sights on him. Yeah. And guns. There's the there's one that kept everyone, literally everyone guessing for about a year when, wasn't it the bit where uh, Sherlock jumps off the side of the building yeah. and then he comes back and it, it had everyone speculating how he could survive that. And, and I can't remember the name of the episode, but the one where, where Moriarty is pretending to not be Moriarty, right? Yes, that that, that is was really that's good so one. clever that episode. <laughs> um, yeah, because he gets off, he gets off for, for free, he gets off free in the trial as well, doesn't he? Because he kind of plays pays out the jury in some weird way. But it, yeah, it's so well pieced together. Yeah. That episode where it, he's playing someone else, it did kind of make you step back and think, "What's going on here?" Like, I get, I get it all, but I don't get it all at the same time. Like, I'm following, but I, I can't see where it's going. Yeah, the last season was back in 2017, so it's been seven years. And at the time, they did say they, Cumberbatch and the producer did say that they were hoping to do a fifth one. So I don't know now with with them both being entrenched in Marvel now, right? Well, well, and also he was the Hobbit as well, wasn't he? So Martin Freeman went and come become a Hobbit. He went and become Doctor Strange. I think it's hard to get them back <laughs> once they've gone and become a list celebs elsewhere, haven't they? Yeah. Okay. Very good starting choice there. What's What's next? I don't know if you're going to let me have this, <laughs> but I am going to. I'm going to say it anyway. So as you know, I've been. I've kind of got back into wrestling a little bit lately, um, <laughs> and I used to follow it as a kid. But can I have 
for WWE shows from during the Attitude Era? Like if you kind of wiped them all out and started watching them one by one each week. It's technically a show. To. I can't fall out with you. Anyone listening, if you come on the show, you can't do what Dan's done, all right? <laughs> he's, he's got special <laughs> special dispensation as of a friend of 10 years and co-host. Yeah, why not? Go on, because it would be fun to talk about. So you are talking about the whole Attitude Era of wrestling, yeah? The whole Attitude Era of wrestling, yeah. And yeah, like you said, I know you are a huge fan of wrestling. So... I, I think I'm going to know what you say, but what is it about that specific era? Um, well, I think the that that era was. I just think they kind of hit a sweet spot in the amount of like champion, like worthy uh, wrestlers, and who, you know people that were good on the mic and people that were good at kind of like telling a story or playing a story. And I don't, I just don't think you're going to ever see. We're kind of, I think it's getting a little bit back there, but when you've kind of got like you know, Austin and The Rock and The Undertaker and Triple H and Mankind and Big Show and Undertaker. And there was just so many people that could potentially be a champion. And it wasn't watered down back then because now they kind of have them split in between two different shows. They were all on the same show fighting for the same thing. And I just felt like the storytelling at the time was just incredible. And not just that, the mid card was good as well. And you you could watch a show and be invested in all the stories. And I also probably quite liked it. It was before the internet really became a thing in social media. So actually it was a bit more, I don't know, it felt like the storytelling was more on the show than like reading rumours on the internet. So yeah, I've got it here as being mid-90s to 2002, something like that. Yeah, with notable stars that kind of, like, as you said, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, Mick Foley, Triple H... Kurt Angle, Kane and The Undertaker, those were all, and, and they still are, you know, really big names, weren't they? It was it was almost like must-watch TV, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, uh, it was phenomenal. And I, I still feel like now that wrestling today sometimes relies on some of those people coming back to, to kind of make guest appearances, whereas back then, that wasn't relied upon. They didn't need people from the past to keep coming back. They they were kind of so wrapped up in it, and yeah, it was just a massive, you know, massive era for wrestling. I would love to, you know, if you could if you could wipe my mind and I could watch an episode of Raw every week um, live, um, as in live on the telly and not after it's happened. That would be incredible. Like I would be so into it again. Like you said, you're kind of getting back into it. Or, or you've never really strayed away from it, but you've never watched it constantly over the last few years. So it's something I haven't watched it for a number of years either. And I just find when, and it could be because of that, but I just don't find some of the, well, I don't find the majority of them, the, the wrestlers grab me or the storylines. And, and look, let's be honest, there were some really bizarre out there and silly storylines back in the day as well, right? But I just find that there is no, there's not as much almost charisma. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The characters are not quite the same. Like, it feels like now the characters are wrestlers, whereas back then the characters were, the wrestlers were characters, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I guess it changes and it it, it goes through phases. So now you've got, why am I having a complete blank? The guy who, who was champion, uh, Roman Reigns. Yeah, yeah. You've, had, you've got Roman Reigns. And I know he's gone through a, people hated him at the start, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and liked him. And, and you know, when I've dipped in and out the past, I've liked watching like the New Day and people like that. But like you said, yeah, the fact that they have to keep bringing in all the old people keep coming back just to, to bump it up, it says a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, and like the last few years as well, they've... I feel like we've had to rely on part-time wrestlers like Brock Lesnar was always ever part-time. Roman Reigns has only wrestled about 11 times in the last year. And you know, that was never the case back in the year. They wrestled every single week and every single pay-per-view. There was none of this part-time champion stuff. The Rock comes back every five years, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he's just came back for a bit and now he's gone again. But just the storytelling back then was incredible. You've cheated again, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give you. You that. asked it, me for you asked me for a show. That is a show. I'm going to have to really start camping down on the rules now. Look again. I, I think this is great. I've I've said a number of times on here, and we've spoken, you know, sort of personally that yeah, this was probably my era of wrestling in the, in the sense of when I used to watch it, and 
like you said, yeah, if I could get access to it easily now to watch it week on week, I'd, I'd snap that up. Is it on the network? It's on, I've, can you go back? I know you can go back on old pay-per-views on the network. I don't know if you go back on old episodes. It's worth checking. Okay. All right. What's the next bunch of series going to be then? So, <laughs> Bunch of series. Right. Um, I feel like I'm going to have to go Doctor Who as, as my last okay. one. It was between this and Black Mirror. I felt like because we talked about Black Mirror quite a lot. I talked about Let's Doctor make that the honorary mention. Then. Yeah, that's the honorary oh. mention. Doctor Who, I chuckle because I was talk- I was saying this the other day, Doctor Who at the moment just seems to divide the fan base. So yeah, talk to me about your your experience with it. Doctor Who, um, so when it kind of came back, Christopher Eccleston, and the Christopher Eccleston through to Peter Capaldi era, I think was really, really good. And it had me gripped. You know, I used to look forward to each episode. I'd make a night of it. Um, I'd usually end up eat, watching each episode like twice to kind of make sure that I didn't miss anything. Probably similar to what we've done on Black Mirror lately is that I'd watch it once on the Saturday night and then I'd watch it again on the Sunday morning. I felt like it struggled in the Jodie Whittaker series. I don't think that's down to her though. I think that's there was just really bad storytelling and really bland assistance. So even though I watched every episode, I got a bit bored. Um, there was a few good moments in there. But now I feel like this combination of Suti, I think that's how you pronounce his name, Suti Gatwa and Shuti, I think I've seen, yeah. Shuti, Shuti Gatwa, Millie Gibson, I think have been brilliant. And I feel like, and it kind of returned back to, oh my word, I forgot his name. The writer's come back, hasn't it? He used to write all the David Tennant ones. Russell T. Davis. But he's back writing now. And I think the show has just picked up phenomenally. And I think, the, the guy that's playing Doctor Who now is exactly the guy that you need to kind of restore a bit of faith. And Millie Gibson, who's playing the assistant, I think, again, just brings a bit of character to the assistant after a few years of a really bland, boring, not much storytelling with the assistant. So, yeah, I think it's been really, really good since it's been back. So I watched it a few, quite a few years after it rebooted. So I really enjoyed the Eccleston years. I really enjoyed the Tenant years. Who was after Smith? Matt Smith, yeah. It was towards the end of the Smith years I started to get turned off a bit. And Capaldi, I only watched the first few episodes because, uh, and I've said to some people that it just felt like it went away from being, I want to see Doctor Who because I want to see space adventures. I want to see aliens. I want to see them go weird planets. And it was set more on Earth. And it's, it felt, you know, he was going through a crisis. Like, am I a good person? Am I a good person? And, and things like that. And then, like you said, I didn't watch uh, the Jodie Whittaker ones. And again, I think she was a victim of the writing. But the clips I've seen of this one, while a lot of people are complaining about it, it does look like it's got that fun element back to it. Yeah. And I'm actually yeah. tempted to go back to the Eccleston years. So just wondering if there's maybe somebody uh, that I'm talking to wants to maybe do a... Oh, I'd love to. Shall I'd we? Love to. Yeah, right, we, you, could, we, you, could, you, we could do a bit of a Doctor Who rewatch. But there you go, everyone. You've heard it here. He signed up. It's, yeah. It's in- it's interesting your comments about the Matt Smith era, though, because I think that first series of Matt Smith, there has never been a better series of Doctor Who. That first series was spot on every single episode. But towards the, the second half of the Matt Smith era, it yeah. got a bit boring yeah. and a bit, you know, it got to a bit where he'd, he'd lived for like 900 years. And I was like, this is getting silly now. And that, that was a bit silly. The Peter Capaldi era, I felt like I didn't enjoy on first watch and I think it took me too long to get used to him as a Doctor Who and then I re-watched him and I was like this is really good so it took me a second watch to actually enjoy the Peter Capaldi era he is very different choice or he was a different choice wasn't he to to everything that had come before and yeah I just maybe I binged a lot of it in one go maybe it's the like I said I call it the navel gazing but it got a bit too serious and I just wanted more fun adventures so I will watch this one but I'm waiting I don't want to wait week on week. I want to wait for it to be released and then and then I'll watch it. But yeah. maybe a Doctor Who reflection series coming up soon then. Yes, please. All right then. Let's lock it in. Right. So This was meant to be mind wipe, not what can I sign up Dan to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> like a like a job interview. Are we gonna go back to the nineteen sixties though? No, we should start from the Eccleston, uh, right? Yeah, we like, start, from, start from Eccleston, yeah. So let's move on. Video games. Now I know you do dabbling games. You don't. You don't 
Well, you're not massively invested in them, are you? But you do enjoy the odd game here or there, don't you? Yeah, I go through um, fads, I guess what you can call. So I've got a, a PS5 um, and I had a PS4 before it. Um, I play the odd game to a point where I get obsessed with a game until it's until I'm done with it and then I won't play it again. I won't play with PlayStation again for months. So I've got two games I became no, probably three game three PlayStation games that I've got obsessed with lately. The first one I guess covers multiple games, but it's just the Spider Man series. Absolutely love that. To the point where, you know, one of the Spider Man games come out during COVID, I think, or around that sort of time. Um and it was a to a point where I like play it on my lunch break at work and I put it down and one, <laughs> once a day once the my work day had finished I would then log back on at five o'clock and play it for like seven hours until I went to bed like I was I was obsessed with it such a well put together game such a you know having the freedom of New York to kind of explore and the fight scenes were brilliant yeah so it's a really really good um, my son my eight-year-old has just got into them and he's he's currently having the same obsession i did so he's going through each of the games so yeah. spider-man one mars morales spider-man two um and he's going through he's going for them all at the moment to see if he can complete them which he's pretty much done actually and i, I feel really... like he's done it quicker than me but <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think it's great when a grab a game grabs you like that though it, it was perfect you know perfect during the time of covid where we we're all kind of stuck indoors because I was just I'd lose an evening because I'd be so wrapped up in this game, yeah. and you know sometimes you go, well, I'll just do this bit, <laughs> yeah, one more, level. and then I <laughs> then I'll go and get some food or go yeah. go to bed, and then two hours will pass, and we're like, oh, missed missed that opportunity. I'm still waiting for you to lend me, lend me your PS5, by the way. So, yeah. oh yeah, because you don't have you don't do PlayStation, no. do you? So you've missed out on those games. Yeah, yeah. So anytime soon. Yeah, really good choice. I mean, I've not played them, but yeah, they they look absolutely amazing. The okay, second, what's, what's the next? second one um, I had for similar reasons because I got I got a bit obsessed with them. I was obsessed with it was Gotham Knights, um, and you you actually <laughs> yeah, yeah. played this game. Yeah, yeah. I really liked it. I thought it was a, a bit of a what's a bit of a spin off from the usual superhero type game. And again, I became obsessed with it um, until I completed it, and then I haven't picked it up since. <laughs> It got a bit of flack. It got a bit of flack in the, you know, reviews and that. But yeah, I actually really enjoyed it. Once you got into the routine of it, once you got into the flow of it, it was great to pick up and play for a little bit of time. You probably wouldn't play it for seven hours, but yeah, it it, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And the last one I got is the game that I've recently bought and become obsessed with is WWE 2K24, (laughs) um, which is, you know, it's obviously linked to my wrestling thing, but it's the first time. First time I've had a wrestling game since probably WWF Attitude, you know, back on the PlayStation wow, 1 or yeah, 2. Yeah. So it's been a long time since I've played a wrestling game. I loved it. Yeah. Got right into all the story modes. I've pretty much nearly completed it now. Just a little bit to go. A few more WrestleManias to win and then I've done it. See, I, having said that I don't watch wrestling, it is a it is a guilty pleasure of mine that I do like to get the wrestling. Now, I won't buy them on release i'll wait for them to be reduced or maybe i'm i might be a couple of years behind so i haven't got the new one yet but i do love a wrestling game they're so much fun yeah they are i've, I've not, not done many multiplayers yet but the story modes i think are really good yeah, i tend not to get into the multiplayer because i get beaten too easy but yeah and and i think the one you've got this year's one the last few years or last year's one was okay but a few years before that they were steadily really going downhill um, yeah. last year's one was a step in the right direction i think this year's one is the best one for for a number of years and yeah so it sounds like i've hit a bit of a sweet spot with it which, which has been great and uh and i know the, the previous wrestling games have all been based around the single wrestler and you go through his story yeah but this one's about wrestlemania because it was wrestlemania 40 this year and it goes through like a load of wrestlemania key moments and that's almost a little bit nostalgic going through those matches perfect for you Perfect knowing, for me, yeah. Yeah, knowing that you like the nostalgic bits. So Yeah. Excellent. No, all, all good choices there. All good choices. So this one is always one I, I find harder to frame, but either albums or songs or artists, music, you know, bands or singers that you, you'd want to hear for the first time again. Yeah, I struggled with this. I'm not a massive, I say I'm not a massive music fan, but I don't become like a, 
I don't go to music concerts. Um, I don't really have particular favorite music. I have the kind of types of people that I like. So, you know, I like Ed Sheeran. I like the acoustic. I like Oasis. Um, so I found it really hard to kind of narrow us down to something specific. But probably the one band that I probably do listen to a lot, and it probably a bit nostalgic around it, is the Beatles. So I've, all, I've always been a bit of a big Beatles fan. Um, and a lot of that is down to growing up with my dad, who was also a big Beatles fan. So that's probably the, the one I would probably kind of do. But then there's also a risk of this, right? There's also a risk that if I wiped my mind of it and listened to it again, I would think it's not aged well. You, do you know what I mean? Like there's a history to it as well. And you well, like this it because is, it's this historic. This is what I'm saying, actually. This is what I should have said. So you are going to relive it like you enjoy it the same as you did the first time. That's 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 what I should have said because... Even games like I might pick a game from 40 years ago. Actually, I'm not that old. I might pick a game from uh, 30 years ago. They won't be great now, but you're reliving it as you did at the time. So I get what well, you're I saying about the Beatles. I should probably add I wasn't alive during the Beatles <laughs> period. But I, yeah, yeah, they're probably number one. I get, I get what you're saying about maybe has it as well, but I think the Beatles have. I think even though, especially the early stuff is that really, really kind of like poppy stuff. It's still great. There's actually um, a film based around someone forget well the whole world yeah. forgetting the Beatles songs, and that's that's a really good. Well, I say it's a really good film. I I enjoyed that film. Not it's seen just, it yet. Have you not seen it? No. Uh, you you should watch it. It is good. If you're a Beatles fan, it is good to kind of relive that music. Yeah. Yesterday, I think it's called, isn't it? Yesterday, yeah. The second one I've got is Oasis. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's an interesting second choice with the Beatles being first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I've only listed two, so all you've got is Beatles and Oasis. Okay, okay. That's some music I'd like to forget completely, but <laughs> I don't want to re-experience them. Um, Oasis, just, just I like, I like the music. There's not many albums which I can listen to from start to finish, and probably the Beatles and Oasis are probably the only two bands in that bracket. Whereas other albums, I get bored of and have to kind of switch to a different genre. Oasis and Beatles would be in two in my three, definitely. And who would who would be your third then? The third, it depends on the day you ask me, I think. But weirdly, <laughs> weirdly, I'd probably put Nirvana into it. Okay. Always like Nirvana. But we're not asking me, we're asking you. So Okay, sorry. Nicely deflected. Okay, books. I know you're a bit of a reader. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I struggled with this one. And I've got two books here. And I'll tell you okay. what we both are in a second. Yeah. But I have never, ever, to this day, ever read the same book twice. Oh, really? I really? And I had a conversation with my son about this because my son has just become obsessed with the Harry Potter books. And I was like, oh, I read Harry Potter and I enjoyed this and this happened. But as I'm kind of talking to him about it, he tells me that it becomes quite apparent, but I've quite I've forgotten quite a bit of the stuff that happens in the Harry Potter books. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, and he was like, you're going to have to read it again so we can talk <laughs> about it. And I'm like, no, I can't read it again because I just can't read the same book twice. So for my first choice, I'm going to say the Harry Potter books because it would be cool to kind of relive with him going through those books because he is an absolute fanatic um, yeah. at the moment. Um, so yeah, so that's my first choice. Must be uh, must be interesting having your your son go through the same thing. Like you said, you, you know, you've got the the Spider Man games. You said the Marvel will be coming up, and and this it must be great to be able to share those. Oh, it's it's yeah, it's, it's really good fun. Um, and we recently took him to Harry Potter World for his birthday, and I had this like big kid thing come out come out of me, <laughs> like like he's, oh my word, that's like the Great Hall, and that's this, and this is yeah. that, and uh, and to see it through his eyes is just yeah. a, a, a new experience. And it's interesting what you say. Yeah, I can rewatch a film, rewatch a show, replay a game. Books, I very rarely. There's only one book I know I've read multiple times, but I rarely reread a book i read it and that's it it's done yeah it's yeah it's done yeah 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 i agree with the second book i've got and i couldn't I, I struggled to think of this but i've got the da vinci code because i remember just really really enjoying that when i read it and i'm a bit of a conspiracy lover like i love it right, good yeah. i love yeah. a l little you know conspiracy theory and this book is obviously based on exactly that but yeah i enjoyed it so yeah it'd be quite nice to read that again i remember that being yeah quite a page turner when i first read it as well and I couldn't, I couldn't think of a third one. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. It's one to three. That's fine. We can move so, on. So I've already forgotten it. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so whatever it is you've done, I've already forgotten that. <laughs> we'll I've heard we'll it. Uh, let's move on. Let's do the fairly newish one I've added and the one I like, food, food items. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> Here we go, back in the room. Yeah. I think we might agree with some of these. So the first one I've got is pizza. Oh, lovely. Great choice. I just, can you imagine like biting into a pizza for the first time ever? <laughs> what pizza what would f- you choose? Uh, I love um, like a farmhouse chicken, mushroom um, and ham type pizzas. Okay. I think pizza is probably my, my number one. Yeah, because when I put round to yours, uh, you've got a very good pizzeria near you, haven't you? I have, yeah. It's it's very nice. And yeah, that's why I do enjoy popping around. <laughs> that's the only reason you come around. But... <laughs> it's an hour's drive for me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you get a good pizza. pizza. No, pizza's brilliant. Brilliant choice. Yep, not arguing. The second one I've got is a random one, is a really good chicken pie. Okay, nice. <laughs> nice. Like... I love chicken pie when it's done properly and it's not kind of too dry and it's quite creamy yeah. and white sauce. and Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think you can beat that. And ironically, I've not had that in ages, so I'm feeling like I'm missing it just talking about it. But um, my when I was growing up, my nan used to make a really good chicken pie mm. and that's what I thought of straight away when you asked this question. Yeah, I do. It's a pastry. Pie. It's a pastry as well. I do oh, like pastry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, agreed. Um, and my third one is hot crusty bread with butter, like oh, bread, simple, bread, but yeah. the bread that's just come out of the oven with a bit of butter on it. Proper butter, though, yeah, proper, proper butter. butter. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that would be amazing. The smell as well, isn't it? Of bread is just yeah. great. That's such a simple choice, but brilliant choice at the same time. Thank you, I yeah. appreciate that credit. Don't tend to get it that often anymore but you know like when you buy that thick crusty bloomer from the supermarket you know really soft cut a big doorstep slice yes sometimes sometimes i used sometimes i used to have soup just so i could have hot bread and butter with it (laughs) (laughs) it's funny you have to don't you You yeah you can't just have hot bread and butter by itself you need it with soup yeah you can't have soup on its own you have to have the bread and butter with soup yeah yeah that's superb. That is a, I have to say, it, it's a superb trio of items there. <laughs> Thank that you. really is. Yeah, that really is. Um, <laughs> you, you and I are far too similar at the moment. Is there anything else? If, if you had to pick one more item, was there anything else? I couldn't get past the bread and butter, I'm afraid. <laughs> I think everything you've chosen is simple, but really, really tasty, isn't it? it that, that, that's the thing. It's not overly like pizza is is the most probably complicated one there, but yeah. they're just good, ho- wholesome food, right? Do you know another one I've, just, I've literally just thought of, and I've only discovered this recently by accident, is a Five Guys burger. Oh, really? Like, right, yeah. play, but I've, nev- I've never had a Five Guys before, and I've just done a, a half marathon in somewhere. And I just needed something to eat before I got back in the car. And the only place it was around was a Five Guys. So I just had a, a double burger. No, not with chips, just the burger. And that burger is incredible. You like, need to mortgage your house again, though, don't you? To, to buy Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's expensive, but it is, it, it is a good burger. Like, it's so much better quality than you know, yeah. like some McDonald's. And I had my first ever one was we were in america we were at a hotel there was nowhere nearby other than about a 10 minute walk there was a burger place and a pizza place i think and the burger place happened to be a five guys we went in there never had one before this was this was a few years at least before it came out over here and we got one and i just uh, yeah i just thought it was brilliant it was night and day compared to what we got here on the street right high street so yeah no fair enough fair enough Let's move on because I'm, I'm hungry now. <laughs> Gigs, shows, and shows could be theatre, you know, could be plays, anything like that. Have you, anything on this I, list? I, I, I struggled with this one. Um, like I mentioned previously, I don't go and watch uh, music shows or singing or concerts or anything like that. But the the three that I kind of come, come up with were, and there's not much to discuss around them, but Greece in the West End I thought was very good. Oh, right, um, yeah. I saw David Copperfield in Vegas, which was brilliant. Like he was really, really good. And Cirque du Soleil in Vegas in the MGM Grand as well. Um, that was 
that show was breathtaking. So yeah, so if I had to choose three, I would choose those three. They're not bad shows. I mean, you said you struggled, but you've come up with, <laughs> with some with three good yeah, shows. Yeah, they, they weren't they weren't obvious. Like you know, those other things I would love to relive again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these three things are like I've done them now. Yeah, I don't feel like I need to relive them, but I really okay. enjoyed them. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, Greece. I, I've not seen that, I, and I love the film as well, but I never got round to seeing it in in London. I like I like the West End, and the reason why I picked up Greece because I've seen a few, like I've seen Wicked and um, Shakespeare in Love and um, Lion King. But the reason why I liked Greece is just because I like the soundtrack so much better mm. than, than the other yeah. ones, and you know, and you know the music. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, so that's why I picked up Greece rather than the other ones. Okay, you'll be pleased to know there's only a couple more things left. So I'm going to go to this one first. So I've got one to three life events. Now, as I say to everyone, I'm not looking to get too personal here. So it can be anything like passing a driving test. Oh, my well, that's, that's, that's literally the one I've got on my list. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, bro. okay so, cool. So what, what have you got then? <laughs> So I've got to pass my driving test. So <laughs> yeah. that that um, I remember I failed my first driving test. I reversed around a corner and managed not just hit the curb, but I mounted the curb and the car <laughs> ended up on the pavement. Hit a wall, um, went through the front of a house. <laughs> um, so the second test, and I was so confident about the first one, but the second test, um, I was obviously wary about because I'd already failed once. But that feeling when they said, when you say you pass and you feel like all your independence has suddenly arrived and you're going to go here, you're going to pick up your mates on the way home and, you know, drop off your sister here. And suddenly you make all these plans around driving that feeling. It just, you just feel like you've got your freedom, don't you? It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. It's not many too, it's not too many feelings like it, but that is, is up there. Yeah. And that feeling when they tell you you've passed as well, is just incredible, isn't it? Such a relief as well. And yeah, I remember on, my second test when I was driving back to the test center and I was pretty sure I'd done well, but on the road on the way back, it was quite congested and there was a bike in front of me and I had this real dilemma about, do I overtake this bike? Is that the right thing to do? Or should I just sit behind the bike and just wait to get to the test center behind this bike? So I crawled along at like five to 10 miles an hour for the last stretch. I was like, he's going to fail me. I should have gone past the bike. I could have got past him without knocking him off, but um, but yeah, such a relief. I passed on my first test, but I had the worst. You know, they take you for an hour driving beforehand, don't they? Yeah. It was the worst hour driving I'd ever done. The, the instructor had to slam the brakes on, on her side at one point. I almost oh, thought I was going to have a head-on crash at one point. So going into it, I was already nervous. And then partway through... I can't remember what I did. I might have stalled it, but they say as long as you recover from it properly, it's fine. But I, at halfway, I I said to myself, I failed. And weirdly, I think that relaxed me enough to actually mean I passed the test because I think it got rid of all my nerves because I was convinced, <laughs> honestly convinced I'd failed. And then when he turned around and said to me at the end, you passed. Yeah, it was just amazing. So yeah, all those, all those years ago, eh, Dan? All those years ago. Yeah, so. all those years ago. Yeah, it's it's funny i was i remember always remember a story my friend at university was telling me where we kind of talked oh you know when did you pass your driving test did you pass it first time and um, one of my friends was saying oh you passed it a second time and i was like oh so what happened on the first one were you unlucky and he goes no not really i crashed into a wall <laughs> and just, just, just one of the best responses to that question ever yeah <laughs> I mean, if, if you're gonna fail yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was probably a major fail right because you got major yeah. and minors didn't you yeah okay all right sorry was that the one you had for that one yeah yes i had passing your test okay uh, driving test the second one i've got and I, I think a lot of parents will understand this um and i'm not going to go the obvious when you become a parent yeah um because that's that's too deep but the the one moment i would like to relive is my son playing football for his team and scoring a goal like not oh, just a yeah. goal like a proper good goal yeah um and he's not someone he's not you know he's not the biggest of kids and he's um he doesn't score many goals but this one it just kind of broke for him and he just kind of shot on the edge of the area and it went in 
and it was so exciting to watch, but more so, it's so exciting to watch how excited he got um, yeah, when yeah. he scored and he ran off all his friends celebrating. He looked around to make sure I was looking. And it's <laughs> oh. definitely one of my best dad moments ever. So, yeah, so not him being born, but him scoring a goal. <laughs> no, no, I, I get that. I get that because I think, yeah, that's the, the first one. And I actually mean to say to people, you don't need to include that because I don't want anyone, if they didn't say that, to think, oh, the birth of their kids wasn't important. You can see why that that moment you just said was special yeah. to you, right? Because, yeah. like you said, it's it's the excitement that he had more so yeah. than even oh, he was. He was yeah. he was so excited, and it put his team one in up. They eventually lost three one. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, he was, that doesn't he, matter. That he was matter. telling people about it for ages, and yeah, yeah. couldn't couldn't yeah. happen any better. My last one is, um, as you know, I have run a few marathons, so I have run 15 now 16 wow might be 16 but finishing the marathon in new york is probably up there as an experience i'd I'd like to relive again that was um in the winter before the pandemic started so it's november 2019 i've done quite a few marathons at this point but there was something about this one you know it's the first time i traveled abroad by myself to do one and you know it was quite cold um the way that marathon works ends up you you kind of finish in when it's getting dark um, as well, and you kind of cross the finish line. It's just like adrenaline just drained out of your body, and you become like a bit emotional at, yeah. at the end. And yeah, there's something about. Well, I'm movie. saying yeah, like I know what it's like to run yeah. a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, there's something special about finishing in Central Park and then walking through Times Square to get back to your hotel. Um, yeah, it, there's, yeah, there's something special about that. Because you you've done a few abroad rights. You've just done Nashville. Last month was it, or the month before? You've done yeah, Vegas. Nash- Nashville was actually. Is it still May? Yeah, Nashville was this month. I haven't done Vegas. No, Nashville, Rome, New York, Edinburgh, Loch Ness, Brighton, London, and good old famous Milton Keynes as well. Was in there as well. <laughs> I'm sure there's another big. C- oh, Toronto. Believe, Toronto. I can't believe was you didn't choose the Milton Keynes one then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Toronto as well. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember you saying that now, sir. So. Uh, yeah, I can imagine that, especially if you're you're mainly you're running around the UK and especially our area of the UK isn't the most exciting area, is it? Yeah. So to do it in, like I said, in New York. Yeah. And also as well, as I think it was, uh, it was a time when I was having quite a difficult time in life. And I think the fact that I'd chosen that to train for to kind of keep me going um and kind of finish it was quite an emotional moment for me just finishing the marathon would be <laughs> a life moment not not take out where it is done you've done your fair share you've done a london one a few times as well or, or done london one. yeah london one twice twice yeah um and the, probably the, the, the first london marathon was probably could probably be worthy of a mention as well but i just felt like new york was a bit so far away from home it just felt a bit you know london only t- took me an hour to get home like it just because because it's a lot closer, it feels a bit more on my doorstep, whereas New York was, wasn't. was And the one last month, you were listening to Casting Views as you went round it, right? Yeah, yes. Moving on, moving yes. on. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, t- talking about that, yeah, the tech, and we may have mentioned it in the Black Mirror we did after that at the time, but yeah, because you told me about the app, so I was actually able to to track you, weirdly. Yeah, you, you were it. getting notifications when I passed certain points. And yeah, which I think is amazing now, isn't it? That, yeah, just it's, you could... It's, do you know what, as well? It's clever tech. So I actually subscribed to it as well. So as I was going past certain points, I was getting a notification on my phone as well, and I could, I could feel it going off in my pocket. It's not much of a delay. There's only a, a few seconds in it as you kind of... Before it updates that app. I think it's very, very clever. Because I think I sent you, obviously, I don't think you would have seen it because um, you you were obviously at the start line. But I assume you were fairly near, like the middle or the back. And I think you said before, it can take a while for you to get yeah. actually over the start line. So I remember sending you messages saying, are you going to start this or what? Are you actually going <laughs> to run this or what? <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, very cool. Very cool uh, options there, Dan. Very cool. So moving on to the final one. These are sporting events, so you don't have to have been to it. So it's not that you've got to have gone to a World Cup or anything or a football match. You could have seen them on TV. But yeah, one to three sporting events. So my first one is by far my favourite sporting memory ever. And it didn't result in anyone winning a trophy, unfortunately, but it was Tottenham beating Ajax in the semi-finals of the Champions League. What a game. 
what what a game and that kind of got us into the final of the Champions League which is something Tottenham had never ever done um the nature of the way that we won as in we were completely outplayed <laughs> for one and a half matches to go and we needed three goals in the space of about 40 minutes and we got it and it was a Lucas Moore hat trick and just the nature of the fact that he, he scored the last kick of the game and I remember watching it in I was in this pub and you kind of given up, given up hope that we were able to do it because Tottenham don't do anything like this ever. <laughs> yeah. But when we scored, I just remember leaping up and like chair, chair went flying and hugging complete strangers, which is not me. That's not yeah. what I do. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I was hugging like some Spurs fans next to me, and and you were like, you had that moment. You're like, is VAR going to rule it out? Like, is is something's going to go wrong here? Something's going to go wrong. It's, it, they're going to disallow it, but we never did. And yeah, I think that's by far my favourite sport in memory. Like you said, that's the sort of thing that happens against Tottenham, never for Tottenham. So, and even now, when you see the clips of it, it does send goosebumps down, yes. down you, right? Doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And but I think it is more the nature of the win. I think if we'd won that game three 0 and it was straightforward, yeah, we, we would yeah. have forgotten that match. Yeah. But the fact that we won it in the last second of the game uh, with the last kick, yeah, something I remember forever. Nice one. Okay, any others? Andy Murray winning Wimbledon for the first time. Okay, yeah. Well, you're a tennis tennis man I'm as a, well, aren't you? I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm a I'm a tennis. Used to play tennis quite a lot. Um, big big Andy Murray fan because um, I think he kind of came into the game as I was playing tennis a lot, and he's a guy that I naturally gravitated towards. I thought his work ethic is fantastic. I know people think he's a bit boring in front of a mic or on camera and stuff like that, but the the effort that he puts into a tennis match is is unreal. And winning Wimbledon, that Wimbledon final after, and he'd been in a few Grand Slam finals before and hadn't quite made it. He actually won the US Open the, the summer before, didn't he? But yeah, that winning Wimbledon was, was pretty special. I, I remember it so clearly as well. And I think he was 40 love up in the last game and then lost three points. And then it kind of went juice advantage, juice advantage. And I remember the point so clearly as well that, that he won on um, where he served, Djokovic returned and every, the whole crowd thought the ball was going out. So they all kind of leapt up and go, oh yeah, like that. But the ball bounced in, bounced in. Um, and then Murray returned it and then Djokovic put it in the net. And I just remember him dropping his racket and yeah, such a such a massive moment for, for sport and something he fully deserved. Well, and for England as well, right, or or the UK, because it'd been it'd been years since yeah, since Fred Perry, uh, yeah, which yeah. Would, would must have been about fifty years, right, or seventy years, or something like that. Yeah. So every sort of uh, British player always had that weight of 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 that on their shoulders, didn't, didn't they? And then, yeah, I'm not going to say that he wasn't a good player. I'm not saying that at all. But you know, when you had everyone thought it was going to be Tim Henman, right? And yeah. then who, who was the other one? I mean, Greg Greg Rosetsky. Greg Rosetsky, yeah. And then along comes Andy Murray, sort of that quiet Scottish, you know, Scotsman. And it was him that did it. And yeah, yeah, it was. It, I think the sense of relief across Britain was just uh, you could feel it, couldn't you? Yeah, I, I do think he is underrated as a tennis player. I think people don't realise how good he was because he was in an era of like Federer, Djokovic, and Nadal, which are some of the best players ever to have lived. So I feel like he he should have been more successful, but. Yeah, that moment really won Wimbledon. He's also Very quite. Special moment. He's a quiet one as well, isn't he? He's not. You don't see him in the press all the time. He's not. Yeah. There, there's nothing outspoken about him. Do you know what I mean? I think that yeah. also probably feeds into that. Okay, good one. So, third and final one. I'm going to go with. I was torn. So the one I, I I thought about going with is England winning that penalty shootout against um, Colombia. But I've actually gone for... Well, actually, now I say that, I'm thinking about all the Euro 96 games, which I loved. But no, no, let's go back. So London 2012 Olympics and that Super Saturday where we won three gold medals in the space of like half an hour. Uh, yeah. Greg Rutherford, Ennis um, and Mo Farah. I think that, that was superb. And I think not just what, not just that moment, but also like at the time we were kind of... I remember sitting in a house with my mates and we were kind of watching it and it was such a chilled out atmosphere. We'd just done a barbecue and it was such a, a great evening that kind of played into it as well. But yeah, that, that moment where you're kind of 
you're jumping up and down and getting excited about sports you've never ever watched before in your life. But yeah, it did grip this. It did grip again the nation, didn't it? Yeah, it was something about that. Again, being here really helped. I really, I really wish that in hindsight I'd actually done more to kind of get tickets to some of the events because I just let it pass me by. And also, I know quite a few people went and worked at the Olympics. Yes, I wish I, I, I wish I'd done that as well. But maybe the next one. Yeah, because you could sign up. So somebody I worked with was like was driving like the officials around, like. Yeah, that'd be amazing, wouldn't it? You could sign up to do that, yeah. Although you're having to drive in London, right? During the Olympics, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, true. Okay. Well, that's it, Dan. That's the final um, final selection. So I hope it wasn't too traumatic. No, no, it was it was it was good fun. It was um do you know what? Honestly, it's um sort of joking aside, I think from my personal perspective, all really good choices. I think they're they're all ones that I could have picked. Probably wouldn't have Henman as one of my sporting moments, but not Henman, Murray. Sorry, and, uh, Murray, and Murray. There we go. See, I'm doing it now. All, all that, that weight of expectation. Um, yeah, but yeah, there were some really good choices. So yeah, maybe we'll do this again in a few years' time and see if any of those have changed. Oh, that's a bit of pressure, and I have to make sure I keep this note on my phone. To make when sure when you to say make yeah, sure well, I'm consistent. No, well, when you turn around and say yeah, when Tottenham have won the Premier League for four years in a row. Yeah. <laughs> All right, look, do you want to shout out Just Football before we go? Yes, so come and listen to us at Just Football. We know that the season's uh, finished, but we will continue to kind of talk about football throughout the summer. Um, We've got the Euros coming up and obviously all the transfer shenanigans and manager Jerry or merry-go-round. So, yes, come and listen to us. We usually release sort of Monday, Tuesday every week. Um, And come and follow us at Just Football Pod on X. Cheers, Dan. Yeah, so catch Dan, Dave, and myself at Just Football. Uh, I will put the uh, I'll put the link in the show notes. Thank you for signing yourself up to another series with me, Dan. <laughs> it, it's, it's out there now; it's evident, so you can't back out now. And thank you more importantly for doing this, stepping in at short notice to help me out with this episode. So, all that's left for me to say is I will see you next week for another episode of Casting Views. If I want your opinion, I will give it to you. Come on, take what we've got, cause you need it, don't make us get